Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're jumping into some r slash, I think we labeled it as Pro Revenge. It is the continuation of that Papa Pirate series. We've had so many pirates. Yesterday we had Oblivious Pirate. Today we have Papa Pirate. We had a trucker themed thing going. We're just theming with modes of transportation. It's all uh, a schoolhouse rock type of thing that we're doing and I'm pretty interested. The last Papa Pirate story was uh, the tragedy of Tiny Tim, and it was quite tragic, to be fair. Hopefully this one a little bit more lighthearted, at least that's what I've been told, so we'll have to see how it goes. We are live streaming this on Twitch, if you'd like to come through, that would be pretty cool. But if uh, you don't want to, you know, watch it on YouTube, whatever. <laughs> I can't tell you how to live. We'll go ahead, we'll get some more plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this r slash pro revenge uh, cringe. The Ballad of Papa Pirate. Rivalry renewed. Oh, that's good alliteration. What, is this like the brothers? They came back or something? After getting a bunch of wasps in their outhouse? They didn't remember what happened to them last time? Good. Give them some more. <laughs> they need another beat down because they drank too much and the last one slipped out of their brains or something. So, I'm back again with another installment of The Ballad of Papa Pirate. I guess this one would fall under the category of pro-revenge, maybe? Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's where all of these Papa Pirate stories are going. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, okay? Subreddit, it's all tertiary, okay? Some stories just need to be told, like I said. Whatever you want to call it, at its core, it is a Red exclusive. Yes! The branding! <laughs> if you haven't listened to the other parts, I would recommend it. Original posts can be found here. Or you could listen on Red X's YouTube channel instead. Yes, playlist in the description. Thank you so much. And before we get into this new story, we've got a prologue. Kate, Papa Pirate's big sister, had a bad habit of choosing even badder men for companionship. Yes, grammatically, it'd either be worse men, but I was doing a comedic bit, so shut up! <laughs> I didn't say anything about it, I'm sorry. Her little brother, Tired of seeing his big sister get hurt, took it upon himself to terrorize her new suitors preemptively. I don't know if that's the way to go. Like, what if she found a good one and he was terrorized preemptively? Be because we presume from her track record. But yeah, you also probably don't want to wait for them to do something crappy because then, ah, uh, it's a catch-22. At the end of the day, I say do whatever you want to do. You don't want to see her get hurt? Yeah, okay, preemptive is good. And then, that's like the litmus test, right? If they laugh it off, if they're cool about it, maybe they are good people. If they get their egos hurt, something like that, then they're they're probably bad people. So yeah, continue on, Papa Pirate. Do what you do. Only the strong would survive. Some of the more noteworthy trials included hiding a fish under one guy's passenger seat. <laughs> Uh, putting petroleum jelly on the blades of another guy's windshield wipers. <laughs> Chasing one through the local graveyard with one of the only family heirlooms to survive the Great Depression, a ceremonial Knights of Columbus sword. God, that last one seems more like a salt, doesn't it? <laughs> He's just gonna chop him up with a sword? It's gone from like funny pranks to like I'm literally gonna b somebody. Okay, great. <laughs> But there was one, only one, that Papa Pirate did not terrorize. Not for lack of trying, mind you. We'll call him Matt. Why? Well, because Papa Pirate says that he looked and sounded like a precursor to Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Matt got out of his car one evening and started heading to the door to pick up Kate for a night out. He stopped when he saw something suspicious. There was a small length of rope running across the sidewalk. 
One end was tied securely to the porch railing, and the other disappeared into a bush. Oh, Matt is observant. He, he, he doesn't have the brain of Matthew McConaughey. It's not clouded with smoke or anything like that. He's like, look at that rope on the grass there. What's going on? The rope was lax, but if the bush end somehow got pulled tight, it would make for one heck of a tripping hazard. I mean, I guess that is a prank. You need to use something thinner, you know, like a high test fishing line or something like that. <laughs> Just straight up rope? Nah, that ain't the way to go. Anyways, Matt, having heard about Kate's little brother and his penchant for mischief and overprotectiveness, made a slow approach, stopping just short of the rope. He followed it to the porch railing and inspected it. Matt, to the bush behind him, You know, this will probably work better with like a bowline or, or a slipknot. <laughs> the bush? Why's that? Matt? Well, let's say I fell down. Someone would hear it and come running. This, pointing to the knot, is... Well, I don't even know what kind of knot you'd call it, but it's a mess. And it would take forever to untie. No way you'd have it undone by the time someone got here. But like a slip knot or a mooring hitch? Strong enough to trip a boyfriend, but easily untied with a single tug. <laughs> Matt's giving out advice on the pranks. <laughs> uh... Oh, that's got a chat pop a pirate's ego just a little bit. And he's gonna go out and show your sister a good time. Maybe he's not an a <laughs> honestly. Let's hope for that. That's, that's what I'm gonna go with. The bush did not reply. Matt, you're down the street with the evidence before I could even sit up if you do it right. Papa pirate, revealing himself to have been the bush all along. You're going to tell my parents, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, no, but I'd appreciate it if you didn't try it again. Or if you do, at least do the rope work, like, better. <laughs> uh, God, that's, that's gotta hurt just a little bit. He thought he had the perfect prank. It worked on everybody else, but not this dude. Papa Pirate, how do you know so much about that? Matt, I'm an Eagle Scout. Did Papa Pirate himself ever join the Boy Scouts? No. Did he allow Matt to date his sister in exchange for the occasional bit of practical instruction? On his honor. Now, there are a number of stories I could tell about old Uncle Matt, and that number is zero. I don't even have an Uncle Matt. Whoa, mind is blown. He didn't make the cut. Who would have thought that young love doesn't last forever? <laughs> <laughs> and why do I not have an Uncle Matt? Because, like the cautious and coordinated curator of a curious collection of colon crafted curios catering to the culinary cravings of customers characterized by <laughs> Matt had his sh together. <laughs> uh, oh, the alliteration brings me so much joy. Thank you so much. And yes, because of that... There was nothing for Kate to fix, and so they were not meant to be. God, that's tragic, isn't it? <laughs> She's like, you're not damaged enough for me. Why Why you need somebody that's, that's damaged? There's got to be some sort of trauma in the past that makes her pick damaged men consistently. But I hope she gets that worked out eventually. I hope you have an uncle so-and-so. Uncle stuff together. That's what his name is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for what it was worth, Matt and Papa Pirate had parted on good terms. He had Papa Pirate's approval, which, I mean, good for him, I guess. But if we're being honest, having the approval of an ex-girlfriend's little brother is like having the instruction book to a game whose disc that you lost long ago. I mean, you could still get some money for that on eBay, right? <laughs> <laughs> Some people are looking to replace their boxed instructions or whatever. You'd be surprised the kind of stuff people buy on eBay. I saw them selling just boxes for a PlayStation. I was aghast! Did you know a PlayStation box worth about like $15, $20? At least according to eBay. Whatever. Anyways, <laughs> I guess that's all the precursor out of the way. Let's go ahead, get over into the story. The year was now 1966-67. Papa Pirate had spent two summers 
working in the tobacco fields, squirreling away every last nickel and dime until he had enough to buy a used car from one of the men at his church. Oh, Papa Pirate ain't a baby no more. We, we had a little bit of a time skip there, didn't we? It was a rust-colored 57 Chevrolet Bel Air that had once been powder blue. <laughs> it's a bit of a fixer-upper. It had a couple of neat features, like the fact that you could see through some holes in the floorboard. <laughs> and that you were almost guaranteed to get a little cardio when the time came to start her up, unless you were able to park on a downhill slope, that is. <laughs> it's a beater, essentially, but hey, first car generally is. And he earned it with his own money. Just don't drive over any puddles or you will get wet. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling death trap though it might be, the rust bucket afforded Papa Pirate and his crew a means by which to head to the next town over. Uh oh, they're mobile now! <laughs> Watch out for those rapscallions. At one time they was just young, but now they're cruising the streets in a car looking for trouble. They used to do it on bikes. <laughs> so yes, they went to next town over USA where things are just as crappy as they are in your town, but with a novel flair. <laughs> well, I'm sold. Let's pack up the kids. We got, we got to go over there. I can't say that with a wholly straight face, though. I grew up in the same town that Papa Pirate did, and it wasn't until senior year of high school that we got our very own Walmart. The marching band came out to play for its opening. Yay! Late stage capitalism! Mom and pop shops are dying! Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, hooray! I really wish I was making that up. So anyways, in next town over, they had a few things in the 60s that hometown did not. Most of the kids Papa Pirate's age went there for the dance hall or the movie theater. There was also a bowling alley and a pool hall with an adjoining bar. I mean, it sounds like Next Town Over got a leg up on Hometown, right? Why doesn't Hometown have any of these things? I guess <laughs> it's cheaper to live there. That's why it's Hometown. And I guess we get a little, uh, a little poetry before the events truly take place. Two parties, both alike in indignity, in Next Town Over's bar where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge renewed presently where stiff drinks make shaky hands unclean. From four year past came these two foes, a pair of star-crossed factions threaten life. The past misdeeds from friends and bros came back once more to end in strife. Oh my God, it, it is the outhouse brothers. <laughs> this is amazing, I love it. They're not just kids anymore, okay? And old habits die hard. The revengeancing. Rivalry Renewed Part 2, The Re-Re-Happening Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Papa Pirate was celebrating a bit of his newfound freedom with a friendly game of pool. If you've read or listened to the previous parts of the Papa Pirate Ballad, you will know two things. One, he wasn't above throwing a punch at an unsuspecting target if they deserved it. And two, his friends had suffered for years at the hands of a pair of alcoholic brothers in hometown. Well, these two things came to a head upside Papa Pirate's head. Oh, they sucker punched him, right? Then you gotta break a pool cue in half and run it through his gut. No, don't do that, you'll go to jail. <laughs> Just break it in half on top of his head. There you go, tit for tat, everything's fine. The room was set to spinning and his ears were ringing when Papa Pirate caught himself on the side of the pool table. He turned around to see the brothers with some of their friends going for an encircling movement. Oh boy. Why does this always happen at the pool bars, right? <laughs> I didn't even shark anybody. It was a friendly game of pool. Leave me alone, guys. Bro one. Well, if it isn't one of those little sh Bro two. <laughs> Looks like there's only a few of them. Where are the rest? Where were the rest? Well, back in hometown, of course. Yeah, you only got one car. You gotta pick and choose who gets to go. The brothers had seen and recognized some familiar faces 
and led an inebriated entourage from the bar to the pool hall. Face to face with their old foes, the pair were once again picking a fight with a group of kids, and the odds were heavily in their favor. They were older, they were bigger, but more importantly than all of that, they also had the numbers. Papa Pirate didn't have his whole crew. What he did have was a rough escape that left him with a fat lip and a nasty headache. Yeah, we call that a tactical retreat, okay? <laughs> you know you're gonna lose this fight. You don't have to stand and fight, all right? Get out of there, live to fight another day, plot your revenge. Apparently they, they did forget. They want a little bit more smoke, so all right, I'm gonna bring them the heat. So, so was this to be the end of Papa Pirate's mischief? Had the time come for him to abandon his rebel ways and walk the straight and narrow path? Hell no! <laughs> he drove back to hometown as fast as his Chevy POS would allow and visited all of the familiar haunts. The shiny diner, the piggly wiggly parking lot, back to the shiny diner. Eh, there were really only two places to spend your time in hometown if you were a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's why they gotta go visit the pool hall. I gotta be honest with you, bro. Hometown seems like it kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna move to the next town over USA, all right? This worked to his advantage, however, since it meant fewer stops on his recruitment drive. Papa Pirate had developed a reputation of being harsh but fair in his assignment of beatings. People would say he had a short temper and saw violence as the solution to most problems, but it was known that you had nothing to fear from him unless you were a total <laughs> So we've gone from just like friendly childhood pranks to, to outright beatings. That's not as fun. That's not as carefree, but I guess, you know, uh, people change over time. <laughs> he found out that the beatings were a lot more effective. So he's like, yeah, we're, we're just gonna do that now. No plotting, no planning. You just show up and beat the hell out of them. Easy. <laughs> he was sort of like Dexter, only instead of killing killers, he bullied bullies. God, Dexter. I really loved that show. It's just the last season that really dropped the ball. Apparently, Dexter New Blood is supposed to be pretty good. I should watch that. Maybe give it a, a bit of a redemption arc. Was that like seven intriguing seasons of Dexter? And then one episode, the ending episode, just throws it all out the window? God. I still feel like my time was wasted. I'll never get that time back. <laughs> it hurt me. It cut me deep. Anyways, this allowed him to cultivate a large collection of people that fell somewhere between acquaintance and friend. When they saw him circling their gatherings like a split lip General Patton, they mobilized and fell in line. A line of cars that made an impromptu trip from hometown to next town over in record time. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> uh, now who has the numbers advantage? Now who's looking real brave? Papa Pirate was half afraid that the brothers would have drunkenly stumbled off into the ether before he could return with reinforcements. But when the Legion arrived, Papa Pirate sent one in to scout to see if the enemy was still encamped behind their glasses. God, I love this. You are painting a picture so beautifully. <laughs> we are at war, boys! <laughs> the scout returned and reported that the brothers and their friends were still present and accounted for. Papa Pirate then began clinking empty beer bottles together and cried out, Drunk guys, come out to play! <laughs> Uh, the Warriors? Anyone? No? I, I picked that up immediately. Okay, so no, that part didn't actually happen. Papa Pirate walked into the bar and immediately ignored the bartender, yelling at him for being too young to come in and blah, 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 something, something. He hadn't come for the drinks, unless it was to drink the blood of his enemies. <laughs> uh... Oh, it's good. It's so juicy and delicious. Like the blood of my enemies. <laughs> Papa Pirate. Hey! The brothers looked 
as if they had been slapped. Did he just say what they thought he had said? Did this little sh really have the brass pair required to come into the den of the enemy and issue such a challenge? Papa Pirate, you wanted to start something earlier. Want to step outside now and we'll finish it. Either pride or alcohol dictated the response. The brothers did, in fact, have an interest in finishing it until they got outside and saw what it entailed, at least. <laughs> Papa Pirate had assembled no less than 20 boys from his school. Some of them had been on dates and their sweethearts were in the background giving very tepid protests. No, stop, don't. <laughs> Why women always gotta tell the man not to fight? Stay back here, sweetheart. Man, I'm gonna go cauliflower his ear. Bully! <laughs> uh, I think that's uh, a bit older than the 50s or 60s, but we're rolling with it. It's fine. Blood sport worked for the Romans. So, I mean, why fix what ain't broken, right? Right you are. These are the type of people that cannot be reasoned with. The only thing that they understand is hurt. You do bad, you hurt. You no more do bad, right? Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> Papa Pirate. Not so fun when you're outnumbered, huh? Yes, I am aware of the irony here. Papa Pirate and his pals always had the numbers advantage in the past, but they were 12 at the time, so whatever. It's justified. Yeah, I ain't asking too many questions. Justice is justice. I'm gonna take whatever comes. <laughs> The brothers were slowly edging their way back into the bar, but wouldn't you know it, some hoodlums had moved in behind them to block their way. Uh-oh, you in trouble now, boys. <laughs> Where are your friends at? I, I don't like a 20 on two beatdown. Maybe 20 on 10, I'll allow it. They're older, such and such. I think on the whole, like a 30 or 40 year old man would be able to, to handle an 18 year old. Experience comes into play, so does like bulk, you know? It's hard to tackle a dad bod if you're a little kid. So maybe 20 on 10 would be fair, or not fair, but at least more fun. <laughs> the brothers really had initiated this violence. The truce that they had broken was almost old enough to go to kindergarten. It was only one way that this was gonna be resolved. Whoop whoop! Oh, come on! Enter Johnny Law, stage left. Man, that bartender, <laughs> you know he called the police. He just didn't want one of those brothers to get put through the window or something like that. I guess he's protecting his property. I guess you should have shuffled him down the street a little bit more. Maybe into an alley where these type of things tend to happen. Anyways, a sheriff's deputy cruiser had arrived on the scene. The gangs parted to make way for a representative of the law. Matt? Hey, what, what seems to be the... He paused when he spotted Papa Pirate. Oh! It all comes back around, doesn't it? Oh, Matty boy! <laughs> Did I forget to mention that Matt had gone on to become a sheriff's deputy? No, I, I didn't forget. It was meant to be a dramatic reveal, so here it is! Ta-da! <laughs> it is super dramatic! What a reveal! Yeah, I love that. I didn't understand how Matt tied in until right now. Oh, you are a master of your craft, Irish pirate. Matt says, Papa Pirate? What the hell happened to your lip, kid? Papa Pirate with gritted teeth. I walked into a door. Matt looked around at the scene and put on his sleuthing hat <laughs> as he figured out what was happening. The brothers, you see, had a reputation for being belligerent with more than just kids. This was not their first time meeting that particular star-badged arbiter of justice. He had no love for them, but he still had a job to do. Matt? Yeah, well, if that's what you say happened, I mean... That's what happened. I'll just get some names and statements for patting his pockets. Oh, damn. I don't have my notebook. You guys hang tight. Matt then made his way back to the cruiser. He took a cursory glance around and stood up, shaking his head. Matt? Oh, man. I'm not sure where my head's at tonight. 
Probably back at the sheriff's office with my notebook. <laughs> I'm gonna go have to go get it. It'll be about 15 minutes, so no one go anywhere. And don't try to sort this out on your own. <laughs> uh, Matt knows exactly what he's doing. That's beautiful. And we'll give you 50 minutes to beat the shit out of these guys. <laughs> uh, what an MVP play, bro. I wish the law was still like this. Maybe if you know the sheriff, it would be like this, but I never lived in any place long enough to actually know the sheriff. And so reassurances were given by a horde of cross-fingered teenagers while the brothers and their friends watched in horror. <laughs> their terror swelled as the duly appointed enforcer of the law, the bearer of their only salvation, pulled away. And then... The damnedest thing happened. The brothers and their friends suddenly came down with a case of the clumsies. Huh, they walked into so many doors. <laughs> uh, oh, some of them even fell down on the sidewalk and into the bushes, maybe even a gutter or two. Rumor has it, some of them fell down so hard, they ended up with summer teeth. Some are over here, some are over there. <laughs> Uh, oh, you're killing me. A case of the clumsies. A, a little whoopsie doodle. It happens once in a while. It's fine. Get up. You're going to be fine. <laughs> well, wouldn't you know it? By the time Matt returned, the gathering had cleared out. Huh. And after he specifically told them to hang tight. Whew, had they no manners? <laughs> uh... Ah, uh, well, he must have contented himself with thinking, well, I just let them all off with a warning. And this was well and truly the last time that the brothers would try anything with Papa Pirate or his friends. I mean, <laughs> it's like truly the definition of fuck around and find out, right? Find out they did. It was a truce. Everything was going fine, but then you let the booze get a hold of you and you just... You made some bad decisions. You walked into a few doors. You need to drink less. That's that's the secret. <laughs> yeah, gravity's tricky, isn't it? But it is not the last time that Papa Pirate would have a run-in with Matt. However, that's a tale for another time. Next, I think I'll talk about how Papa Pirate made an unceremonious departure from the North Carolina public school system. Spoiler, it involves him losing his temper on someone that deserved it. And that someone was not a student. Yeah, but I mean, they deserved it. Was gravity being a little tricky that day too? I guess we'll have to find out. There once was a boy with a car who went with his friends to a bar, got decked in the lip, then made a quick trip. What luck that his pal wore a star. Honestly, it probably could have gone a hundred different ways, but sometimes karma works in mysterious ways. The universe just aligns. So instead of being like, oh, jeepers, it's the fuzz, and then <laughs> scamper, split. <laughs> we all got to scram, skedaddle, boys. <laughs> Again, I'm doing like a 1940s gangster voice or whatever, 1920s. <laughs> but yes, it is fortuitous that Matt was the one that showed up. And uh, Matt just turned a blind eye. Oh, how unfortunate. The fortunate side is that these dudes, they definitely learned a lesson. That is the end all be all. Is Matt going to be a friend at the end of the day? I mean, how many times can you let Papa Pirate just slide? You know what I'm saying? Sure, we're bros, but at a certain point, I got to hold you accountable. I don't know if Matt is going to be a hero all throughout the stories, but um, I'm eager to see. So thank you so much for sharing with us, Irish Pirate. I love these Papa Pirate ballads. It allows us to get a little bit of pro revenge in here. I mean, if you're knocking out some dude's teeth, maybe that's that's nuclear revenge. I don't really know. Whatever the case, I definitely enjoyed myself. I hope you guys did as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did. Maybe share the video around because it's pretty juicy and delicious, just like the blood of my enemies. <laughs> Uh, you can also check out the links in the description, plugs, playlist, podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Teespring. If you're trying to rock that merch, 
We also got social medias. Like I said, we're streaming this on Twitch, but I've also got Twitter and Discord and Facebook if you want to come through and say hello. We've also got my channel members, my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons helping to make the channel go around. And I'd like to thank them as I do every video, Jerry, Jerry, much. So thank you to Train Boy, AJ Collins, Tiny Boy, Tooth Plushy, Valley Eye, Crane, Cory Arts, Kelly Clark, Pedazzle Mystery, Lurkalush Loser, Florentic Waver, Dungeon Bat, Billy D, Robert Waits, Carrie Sepulveda, Brandon Nightshroud, John and Dorf, Phantom Danica, or Game Steve, Skyler May Amara, The Gypsy Barber, Fire Drake, Samantha, Death's Flagship, Bearded Snake, and Buy Two, Get One Hand. Swapping up the Patreon, we got Ms. Lag, Dark Lush, Charlie Hill, and Robert Waits again. Wow, Double Dipper, Camille Sarah, Chance Blue Dragon, Roxanne Wolf, Sim, Jerry Conrad, and Captain Clown, Jerry, Ellipses, Aaron Jerry, Deku, Deku, <laughs> Esteban, Four Odd Lang, Side, Michael Shambles, Okay, Steve, Pete, Top of the Bank, Marvel, Down, Down, Jerry, Bank for the Gifts, Santa Jerry, Silent Robber, PCP, Fluxer, the Jerry of Industry, the original Jerry, Jerry, Ravencraft, Tick Jerry, Destiny Piper, Jerry, Kasuna, Salty Wizard, Two Eleven Jerry, the Two Jerrys, Very Tired Jerry, a Justy Dragonian Jerry, and Frank Berry, Ain't that hot bitch though? <laughs> Assassin Bug Jerry, Aurora Wildheart, Moon Baron, Baby Jerry, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, Benji and the Jets, Billy D, Bitch Bam, Blade Hero, Bronze Dragon, Catholic Jerry, Commander J Tank, Dennis Dean, Doctor Lars, Aaron Arrow, Eastmars, Rosemary Studios, Fire Drake, Get to at the Doodles, also commissions open. Hey, <laughs> Adrian Br, I'm Slim Jerry, I'm the real Jerry, Inquisitor Jerry, Irish Pirate, Iron Olive, Radiant Jam, Jam Coon, Jerry Smith, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Dalam, Mother Trucker, Jerry Mai was a bullfrog, John Hero, Crew He, Kelly Kraken, Lady Awakening, Legend Maker, Miss Monday, Lord Jerry O, Luke Vex was a race car driver, he was a good friend of mine, never did win that checkered flag, but I helped him drink his wine, something like that. <laughs> like and subscribe, Malady Dix, Mel Garth the Destroyer, Metal Factor, Needless King 89, Paragon Soul, Phantom of the Pines, Jerry Kins, and Jerry Beth, Queens, Quay Lutz, Quagmires, Ramtide, Lacrimates, Rose, Jerry Miller, Sarita, the Lolita, Sassy Octopus, Sa, Scarlet Kevin, Sergeant Gay Cop, Bringer of the Law, Silo Whip, Steampunk Ellie, Stephanie Goodner, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tomago, Tapio, the Blue, the Gypsy Barber, Italian Greyhound Dino, the Lilith Who, Who would you fusky? Trying to find a mob to get back to the real world, uh, you probably don't want to blow into that balloon knot, <laughs> so stinky. Vanguard Angel, Victor Cordero, Viking Jerry, Void the Common Destroyer, Wig Attack, Zephyr, the Gargoyle, or, or Clay, Void Scent Collector of Fringe, Comrade Mooney, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is though. Cage Alice 9, Redwind, not the Viper, Saint Blessing, Third Stuff, Venom Jerry, Wasabi Jerry, Jace Richardson, One Leg Jerry, the Neckbeard Hunter, a normal Jerry holds up a giant bag of popcorn. I promise snacks that I'll share. Thank you so much. I will partake. Admiral T Tank, Emerald Alder, another stupid hipster, Atomic Jerry, Zilla, Bartender Keeler, Big Dad Wolf, Blueberry Apple Pie, Broken Spine Horse, Radish, the original Jerry, that's Cake Jerry, Calvary Jerry Girl, Shepherd's of Lock, Chicago Panda, Corey's Art, sometimes Cow Bunga Cody, Cryptidies, The Fawn Jerry, Neptune, Delph Jerry, Dopamine Dane Jerry, Dwarfy Dude, Dose of Alpha, Graymon 365, Eek Not, Hydra Jerry, Solomon Janitor, Jerry, Jasmine, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Gerald of Rivia, <laughs> Jerry Atop versus Happy New Year's, Wavy Apocalypse, Jerry, both two S's and an E, Jerry Springer, the results are in, you are not the neckbeard, Jerry, the Sussy Pocket, Jerry's mom has got it going on, Jerry Alder Rivera, Jerry Roxas, Jerry Roleplaying Game, Keen Tails, Kid Marvelous, Kids Again, Lucia Lovecraft, Machia CD, maybe next time, Milk Fed, Get Miss Duchess, Mr. Gaz Mask, Not a Visible Angel, Raft Guard, Seldom Dark, She's my Jerry Pie, Skymar Ravenswood, Smack my Bale, Grind Set, Jerry, Get that cheese, ugh, <laughs> Snary, that's Snob Jerry, Spoonie the Rope, Spoopy Scary Jerry Ton, Techno Dubs, The Original Jerry, To Infinite Jerry and Beyond, Unkale, Throws Two Leader Mountain Dew, Grow My Neck Beer, Grow, It's Jerry Time, Holds Radix Morpher, Hygiene, It's Jerry Time, Holds Radix Morpher, Humility, and thank you to my $1 patrons as well. Big ups to all the Jerry's and not Jerry's alike. You guys, MVP status. If you would like to join them in monetarily supporting the channel, that's huge. If you can't afford it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like uh, watching some more Red X videos, right? Please, go ahead. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye.